Hi buddy, welcome to the last video in section 1. Configure password reset and Windows 10 Intune mobile application management. In this video we will configure the self-service password reset functionality and get an intro to the Windows 10 management with Microsoft Intune. We will focus on a bring your own device scenario with Intune. First we will use a pre-staging functionality for the self-service password reset. We set the mobile phone number of a user with the set Azure AD user CMD LED of their Azure AD version 2 PowerShell module. We will also see a way to enforce the registration of a user for a self-service password reset. Second, we will view the password reset policy of our Azure AD tenant with the get MSOL password policy CMD LED. Afterwards, we will configure a custom password reset policy. Third, we will set a user password to not expire and we will close the password reset topic by forcing a user to change the password. With the following configuration, we will enable the self-service password reset features for all users. You can also scope the service to selected users. By default, the mail and mobile phone authentication methods are configured. That's fine for the most common scenario. After enabling this feature, Azure AD requires you to register for this service. Next, we will connect with PowerShell to our Azure Active Directory. As an administrator, you are required to provide two authentication methods by default. In the following configuration, we will pre-stage a user to use the password reset functionality. In this case, we use a default behavior that Azure AD falls back to the mobile phone attribute if there are no registered authentication methods. To test it, we set the mobile number of Jeff and log on to the Azure AD access panel. After the successful password reset, Jeff should be able to access the Azure AD access panel with a new password. By default, you can't set the new password to the last used one. Now we will use the profile section to see the management of your authentication information and to verify the authentication phone as a valid authentication method. As you can see, Azure AD pre-stages the existing mobile phone number for you. Jeff is not an administrator so he needs to provide just one authentication method. In my example, I also register my alternative email address to use it as an additional authentication method, just in case if I need to reset my password and my mobile phone is not with me. Next we will see the different behavior of the required users to register when signed in feature with Alan. Her mobile phone number is not configured on her user object. For this we log on as Alan to the Azure AD access panel. A message that you need to verify your contact information appears. Next we will provide the authentication phone information and finish the registration process. Next, we will gather the password policy information and set custom values. We will connect to the MS Online services with PowerShell and use the get MSUL password policy CMD LED to get the actual configuration. Afterwards, we will configure the policy that the passwords are valid for 90 days and with a notification of 14 days before the password expires. Remember, if you use more custom domains or the default, you need to set the policy for every domain. The next use case will cover the capability to set a user password to not expire. For this we will use the set MSOL user CMD LED to set the password of Pedro to not expire.
If you need to force a user to change his password, we can do that over the set MSOL user password CMD LED. We will do that for Brian and see the behavior. Keep in mind that you need to provide the new created password to the user. Log in as Brian to the Azure AD Access panel and you should be forced to change the password. After the successful change, you should be signed into the Azure AD Access panel. To manage our Windows 10 client, we will use the Microsoft Intune mobile application management functionality to provide you a short introduction into the management capabilities of Intune for Windows 10 clients. As a requirement, we need to create two CNAME entries in your public DNS to use Microsoft Intune. One for the enterprise enrollment and one for the enterprise registration process. Next, we will see how we can enable users to enroll their devices in Azure Active Directory and set some limitations for this process. In the cloud world, we have special device terminologies. The first one is the AD domain joint, this you already know from your on-premise infrastructure. The next one is the hybrid Azure AD joint. So you use a client joint to the local domain and register to Azure Active Directory. This gives you some single sign-on capabilities and other features. The next one is the Azure AD join scenario that you join client to Azure Active Directory. This provides you single sign-on capabilities, then profile roamings and other features. This is commonly nearly the same as you already used in the AD domain join scenario on-premise. Last but not least, you have one for the personal scenario that you can register your client to Azure Active Directory. This gives you the capability to manage applications, for example, with Microsoft Intune as we use now in the next few configurations. To use the mobile application management capabilities, we need to have a Windows 10 7003 client and a 7005 version of Office 365. We will configure a typical bring your own device scenario with Windows information protection to provide a separation of the business and work context on your client. In the following section, we will configure a simple Windows 10 bring your own device scenario with Windows information protection based on mobile application management capabilities. In the Intune console, we will check the needed CNAMES to enroll Windows 10 in a mobile application management scenario. In my case, I need to test my primary domain in witlabs.ch. You need to configure two CNAMES. If the test is not successful, you need to wait or correct your public DNS configuration. Next, we will check if there are already registered devices. If you start from scratch like me, there should be no device. Now we need to enable the MUM user scope in Azure Active Directory. If you miss this step, you will not find the capability to sync configuration settings to the client in the later steps. Be sure that you use the default MUM URLs. Next, we need to allow users to join devices to Azure Active Directory. Further needed for Azure AD joins and the capability to sync user profile information. I also limit the device count to 5. The default value is 20. Now we need to check the client and Office requirements for the scenario. Your Windows 10 version and the Office 365 or Office 2016 version. After checking the requirements, we go to the Intune Mobile Application Management. Next, we will create our Windows 10 Mobile Application Management policy. Be sure that you use the Without Enrollment option. You need to recreate the policy if you want to change this option afterwards. In the next step, we will configure our managed applications. These applications are allowed to handle information in the business context. Every other application will not be able to get business data. They only can be used to work with private information. Unselect the Edge Browser, Mail and Calendar App, Groove Music and the Notepad. For the first part of the scenario, we will allow it to override the protection. This is also a good starting point in a productive environment. To visualize the usage of the Enterprise Data Protection Mode, we will configure the visibility of the icon. Now that we have created the new policy, we need to deploy it. In my case, I prepared a security group called Windows 10 MUM users and added a test user. Double check the configuration. 
Next, we will register our Windows 10 device in the Azure Active Directory. Provide your test user and don't choose any alternate actions. Now you can click your account and under Info, you will find the sync information for the Intune app policies. Let us open Word and provide some example text. We will save the document and find the new Enterprise Data Protection options, Work and Personal. Remember, we are in the creation process, so we are the data owner and we need to choose the correct option. Obviously, if you use Azure Information Protection, for example, we can provide automatically security options based on the content. We will also find the new options in the Explorer context. Next, if we check the advanced properties of the file, we will see that the file is company-based EFS encrypted. With the actual option, we allow the user to decide if he wants to allow the copy and paste of work information into the personal context. Let's change the Windows Information Protection mode to hide overrides and test the copy and paste again. We don't want to wait for the next sync cycle, so we enforce the synchronization process. Now the move from work to personal context is not allowed. The capabilities also provide the security if you want to store work data to a personal cloud storage. In my example I use a personal OneDrive to show that the saving is not allowed to this location. In the next section we will go step by step deeper into functionalities of the several cloud services and we will integrate a single Active Directory forest to provide a hybrid identity and access management scenario with the brand new Windows Server 2016. So keep on trying, testing and exploring the interesting features and functions. Hope you are soon working on the hybrid environment topics with me in the next videos. We start with the automatic provisioning of our basic lab environment in Azure. Keep on moving buddy! See you in the hybrid world!